All right, so I've got the seals on, head on, and this. So now it's time to poke it in the barrel. Okay, now I need some a lubrication here. Little amounts of oil. Try not to get it on my sleeve. Too bad. Get it all over me. So I don't want to push it in. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Didn't want to push it too far. Dumbass. Yeah, now I got that in there. Great. What the hell? Oh, now the packings come out there. All right, well, we're just going to have to put it in. I kind of wanted to get some more lube around that O-ring. So, the reason I leave this rod way out is because when you go to put it on, it's way easier to knock the rod in. Because once I tighten this up, that gland packing is going to get snug as a bug. I'll put anesthes on it this time so that the next poor bastard doesn't have to go through what I did to get it off. This one wasn't actually bad, but still haven't got those two other ones apart. Probably got to go the other way, don't you? One thing I can think. All right, I kicked its ass. This is backwards, but hey, it works, sorta. <laughs> Like a monkey doing a football here. This is retarded. Retarded. There we go. There. Helps if you do it right. Still doesn't want to grab like one, two. See, that's tight, like Tiger, but it will move. You can see that the brass is clear up against the head. So, once, like I said, once it compresses that packing, they get tight. So, let's go see if we can get it on. All right, so this is probably going to take a few tries to get this. The right length so let's see basically I gotta turn this somehow uh, I should have done that in the vise so it comes in here goes on that so I gotta close this up quite a bit still gotta go more 
Okay, that is so close. So close. I just need to get a hammer. Hold on. Jeez. Jeez. Okay, together again. So I have the two back cylinders on. So I can either majorly disappoint myself and put those other cylinders up in the vise, see if I can undo them, or I can start assembling uh, outrigger cylinders. What do I do? Okay, how much you bet this ain't coming off to save your ass? Yep, it's not coming off. Should we see if we can break the vise off? We should, huh? Pull this out of there. Jesus. Yeah, that ain't coming. What do you suggest I do here? Heat the hell out of it with a rosebud? Okay, I gotta sit down and think about this, decide what I'm gonna do. All right, so I got a outrigger cylinder on. So I'm ready to put this nut on. I got copious amounts of anti-seize. So what I did is I cleaned the threads up on the barrel in here and I screwed this all the way on till this went clear up against the end of the barrel because there is enough threads to do that made sure it was free had a one spot where it wasn't exactly turning very good so I took it off took an o-ring pick cleaned some hardened rust and junk out of the threads washed them out and it went on piece of cake so one of the things I've learned is not to put the brass piece in with the head. Put the head in first, leave your brass up here, then put the brass in last. Because what happens is when that brass goes in, it's trying to pinch that chevron packing, which makes it pretty tight to move on the cylinder. And uh, I think that's why a lot of these were so damaged, is somebody was trying to drive them in. <laughs> And hitting them here and that just that don't work but if you slide that brass piece ahead and you got a flat piece you can tap it in and get the seal in get it clear down against the barrel and then you can put your brass piece in it goes right in and then when you tighten this up it's going to pinch that packing all right so I brought the cylinder over and I got it stuck in there 
and it's got a bar hold in it and let's see if I can give it a little more tighten Go get that pipe. Get a little horking power on our now. That's working good. So, if you remember, these have a brass deal in the bottom so that when you crank these down, you don't damage the threads on them. And it'll push those brass deals against the threads so it can't unscrew. I don't I don't know how in the world that would ever come undone. There we go. Alright, so now I'd like to put the front outriggers are gonna get used more than the back ones. So I think I'll put this this outrigger here was the one with the welded one. I think I'll put that one on the back and the barrel on this one looked really good inside when I honed it so I'm gonna put it right here since I am right here and then when I put the other one together I'll put it there and then I've got to clean up a whole bunch of stuff and get the crane around there to the back last time I ran it over the boom and I had to get the jack and lift this one side way up to get it over the counterweight and the winches. And I don't want to do that again. I found that if I just clean up over there, I can get it around on that side. All right, so I have to put the nylon strap clear up front behind this block here for the hose because you can't really get it under here and get it back out once it's in there and on some of those other ones i wrapped it around here and pulled that hose anyway it cracked the hoses because they were swelled but i don't want to damage this this end screws to the um check valve that bolts to the back of the barrel here and there's just enough room in there. It's kind of tough. It looks like they ran it into something and bent that. Um, if it wasn't such an oily mess and inside the shop, I'd get the rosebud and heat that up and straighten it out. All right, I have this baby installed. She's in there. So. Uh, next step is I got to get another barrel and start assembling another rod. So I got two more rods that are good that I can assemble. Actually, what I need to do is I need to uh, put some bearing mount in. Where are they here? I just saw them. Now I don't know where they are. Oh, I need to glue in the wiper seal. All right, so I've been putting together these glands for the outrigger cylinders, and I've got two of them together. Got the seals in them. I put bearing mount on them. Loctite 609. And what I'm doing now is I'm having to clean up these outside brass pieces and the inside of these until these will go down in there nice and even. Um, really hard to put together if they're stiff. So that, that one wants to go in, but it's just I need to take just a little bit more off of it it doesn't take much, so all I do is take some emery paper and go around it. 
they've been beat up and scratched pretty bad and brass is really sensitive to hammers and punches and stupid things guys do to them so I just go around it and take a little bit off and then clean it up good get all the residue off of it and then test fit it again until I can get it to go in there once you get a little oil on it they'll slide right in but like I said I found that uh, I'm getting faster and better at this Seems like the more you do it the easier it gets this one's see it goes it should go in like that but it's still kind of snug so we'll have to sand just a little bit more off of it so after I put it in I can see the spots there's one there and you can see it's been damaged right there they've hit it with a flat blade screwdriver trying to knock it out and it's heaved that so there's one problem area here's another one here and there's a screwdriver mark and so my high spots are out here on the end here's another one so I just need to sand those down. I don't know if you can see them. I can see them really well in the light. It makes a mark on them. So it's mostly on the outside here that needs cleaned up. And it, it's where they've hit it and damaged it. So I've had to test fit this about three times. But she goes in there fairly good now. There, it's such a tight fit that you've just really got to have it perfect to drop back down in. But I don't want to force it. I don't want it loose-loose. So... See, and then inside somebody's gave it the old screwdriver job in here dinged up the sill surface so I've still got some bumps and lumps here and you can see there's a shiny high spot right there so I'll have to get out a seal and see how it fits in there before I clean it up and drive it in so if you're gonna get bearing mount to stick to these seals you have to take emery paper and sand off this rust preservative sealer stuff get them scratched up down to bare metal and then when you sand it in here you got to keep using some ether or some alcohol something until it comes out clean it looks clean but this is the kind of stuff that comes off when you spray ether on a paper towel and run it around in there to clean it out the bearing mount's not gonna stick if there's oil and stuff in it. And you can see it's still coming out dirty. So I'm pretty anal about cleaning. This head is actually the one I had to go put on the lathe and straighten it up. There was just no way I could get that round. I'll show you where that dent was. So see where they bashed it so bad right here? That was humped up and the seal was actually pooched out. I think I showed you that. But they've just beat the tar out of it and you absolutely can't use about the only kind of punch you can use on brass would be to take up a take a slice of wonder bread and roll it up that's the hardest material you can hit with brass is wonder bread so now i'm going to take some sandpaper and sand all this green stuff off and it's nasty stuff because it plugs up the paper real quick it leaves the green on the emery cloth But you use that bearing mount basically to get these out again. You practically have to take a torch and heat that up to 300 and some degrees to burn the bearing mount out. Bearing mount is the most powerful stuff for a glue I've ever used. It's just wicked. Been on the phone tonight with Knox Pilate up in Montana. We had a good talk. You know, I'm 
really grateful that I've been able to meet and know as many friends as I have through YouTube. It's just, it's been awesome. That's one thing YouTube is good for, is learning stuff and meeting new people. And Knox is good people. I told him, I said, if it hadn't been for YouTube, me making a YouTube channel, you and I would have never met. So I'll take this dirty one, clean a lot of the stuff off, and then I'll take... It doesn't help when your hands are filthy either. I really, really need to wash them. So it's got an oil on it. you got to get that off. It's got it on the rubber. It's got it everywhere. And when you sand on it, you're going to get particles on the rubber so always clean that off good inside the lip and the groove and then I take it once it's clean and set it aside and this is clean let me try it one more time make sure we don't have anything in there and then we want to get the inside of this too to make sure it's clean okay so now what I do is I take some bearing mount I don't know if I can do this hanged it like this so maybe you can see I don't know let me yeah I just take it and blop it around in here it comes out of the bottle pretty fast I don't want to get too much or it pushes it all to the bottom. Whoa, Jeff. Anyway, so I get that coated. And then get the seal coated. And then I just take the tip and make sure that it's just a thin layer around there. And do the same in here, spread it around. I don't want to use my fingers because they're dirty. And this tip's clean, so I got that in there. So then we'll just take the seal, put it on here touch just the lip to get it somewhat straight and then I just take this and go wham we're there but since these seals are kind of thin and it leaves a gap under there I take this punch and very carefully go around it and bring it down till it's seated in the bottom this hole's kind of loose so if you don't do this and you don't use bearing mount, it's going to push this out. So there's a couple ways. The best way to use this if you have a loose fit like that and you can get it in quick is they make a primer and you take that primer and spray it inside the bore and on the seal and you let it sit for a little bit and then you go ahead and put your bearing mount on it and you don't have a lot of time so you got to get it in and get it in now anyway once you get that in that stuff will set up really quick it's a catalyst for it and then you just make sure you don't have any on the seal it's not i don't it'd take a long time to dry on the seal but I don't think it ever would do anything, but you just don't want that in there. So there we are. And then let's put the packing in here. So what I do is take a little bit of oil, it's hydraulic oil, and roll it around in here, lube it out, and then we'll get a package of seals. So this, this is the seal stack and this hard one is going to go in the bottom and you're going to go with a black one which is kind of fibery 
like old style packing and I like to get some oil on those because they fit tight so just helps to get lubrication helps everything if you know what I mean <laughs> helps it go in better so then the next one is going to be a white one these are kind of a soft rubber and they go right down in pretty easy then another fiber So this is the sealing technology they had back in the day was packing. Nowadays you have U-cup seals and buffer seals and they're all made out of high-tech plastics that withstand the hydraulic oil and the heat and they just work really well. And you could probably convert all this stuff over to that if you wanted to make the head or if you actually you could probably bore this head just a little wider put a sleeve in there and then cut two grooves one for a buffer seal and uh, one for a u-cup and then you could use modern seals and then as far as the brass piece goes you could replace that with a metal one and then put a wear band in there they invented those which are awesome because basically it keeps it from wearing the head where that ram goes in and out so the thick piece the flat on it is the last one to go in and the reason the thick one goes there is because your gland is going to press against that as it goes in and compress those seals so you need the thick one on top and the other one at the bottom is laying in there so you're not going to damage it so then what I do I don't I don't know I'm going to set this in here and just leave it and these are probably going to sit overnight in the warm shop so that they have time to cure and there it is so like I said when I tighten that head up all this gap right here is going to disappear this brass piece is going to go against the head and that brass internally is going to press on that packing and flare that packing out flare so if you're trying to put this in the barrel and you're pushing on this you're pinching that rod and it won't move so like I say if you take and uh, put this on first and get it in the barrel far enough that you can get the threaded nut on take this put it in there then you can compress this and get it all down you saw me have all that trouble on that what was it, the steering cylinder? That little one. I just had a terrible time getting that together. So I just set them over here. And I got a paper towel to cover them. Keep them clean. So nothing gets in them. And it is probably about 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. So I've had enough for tonight. I think I'm going in the house. So... I have to thank a couple of my YouTube subscribers uh, who told me to use the air hammer. So I took those two steering cylinders and bolted them in here and put the pipe wrench on them. And then Jake took the air hammer to the outside and started banging on it. And they just went zit and came right undone. Piece of cake. Uh, I would have never imagined that vibrating those threaded nuts would do that. But that came undone so easy. I'm like kicking myself for fighting them so long when that's all I needed to do. So I want to thank both of you for mentioning that to me. It worked beautiful. Uh, I got them undone. 
I got the nuts in here and the glands, the, the barrels are laying down there in the solvent. Uh, but I want to show you something. So somebody put this piston on backwards. Um, it's supposed to go on like that and then your nut goes in here and they had it the other way and then they took this and tightened it down and just bent the snot out of it. Okay, so I straightened this one retainer up and then I noticed this. Look how chewed that up, how chewed up that is. And so then I looked in the, the barrel and uh, lo and behold, you can't see it from here probably, but that barrel is ruined. So I, talk, I talked to uh, Andy today and I'm gonna send him that cylinder with the chrome gone, he's gonna put a rod on it. So I'm gonna to have to send him this barrel and get him to rebarrel that. Yummy. Got my cylinder honed out, cleaned up best I can. It's got a ridge in there. I think that's where the O-ring seats. I sanded on that pretty good. I couldn't get it all out. But I may take some more emery paper to that and clean it up a little better. And uh, I got to clean this chamfer up a little better here. Get the rust off of it so the seals slide in good. And then I think I'm ready to start assembling this one. Alrighty, <clears throat> so I got this other cylinder steering cylinder put together and installed that was a good cylinder inside honed it cleaned it right up went together piece of cake got my outrigger on back here got that one all installed she's good to go so i'm gonna start cleaning up and going through the check valves for those outrigger cylinders and get all those cleaned up put back on <clears throat> and then get some hoses made for them anyway just have to take them apart they're ones i've taken apart before full of watery oil and debris so I'll make sure they work we don't have a problem start cleaning up some of my mess get rid of some of this junk i don't need anymore and uh, after I get that done, I'm not looking forward to it, but I got to figure out how to get that big thick cast block out from under there so I can get that rotating valve out. Okay, I am cleaning and assembling these valves. So I tried to get this uh, pipe plug out of here because it just comes up in. And there's a passage from this port goes over through and down into this one then the last one that i took apart that was full of goopy oil water junk but i broke a 3 8 drive allen head deal off so i i got out an impact one in the half inch milwaukee and it wouldn't even touch it so that is not going to get cleaned out so I've washed it and washed it and washed it tried to force some down that little pack passage anyway I'm hoping that uh, I've got got it cleaned out I guess we'll find out when it don't work huh okay Jeff where'd that one go it went in and where did it go Trying to remember. We got a small bore, large bore. Did it go in that one? No, I don't think so. Did it? Did it go in there? 
I don't think so. It goes on this side. You dummy. No, I don't think it goes in there either. Does it? Does it go in there? No. You know, sometimes I... <laughs> I went in the house to eat, to eat dinner. And now I've forgotten where the hell this one goes. Don't go there. <laughs> Doesn't go in that one. It's got to go in this one. Doesn't it? Geez, I don't know. That ain't big enough bore. Gotta go in here. Yeah, bingo. Goes in that hole. Okay, and then, let's see. What goes in that one? Oh, I remember. So, this little piggy. So, this is a rear outrigger cylinder uh, check valve, and it's a little different than the front ones. The front ones have some kind of a pressure regulating device on it, which these don't have. Okay, that one's done. So you got head end, rod end, and then this one right here is the pressure one that opens the valve so you get flow. So that's a rear one, that's a rear one. This is a front one. Lost the o-ring out of it already. So it has this adjustable Duma wacky here. Anyway, I got one more to do like this one. It's over in a parts washer. And then those are done, baby. Done. So I honed this barrel out. But it's really tight here. Everywhere they welded it, really tight. So I'm gonna have to take the flapper wheel to that, see if I can open that up. That's gonna make it really difficult for the piston to probably go in. So I've cleaned these threads up and looked at them and I do not see that the tops are tore off of them. They're a, a pretty flat top thread anyway, and the ones in the nut and on the barrel, they look fine. I just, I don't know why they uh, welded that on. Oh well, we kicked its ass. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. So there's not much you can say more. Jeff freaking wins. Jeez, it's 11 o'clock. I should probably go in the house, don't you think? Go to bed. I live out here in this shop. 
Anyway, that doesn't really go on any different than the rest of them. They all kind of wobble just a little bit. Can't have super tight threads. I don't know. What do you think? I think 1500 PSI would tear all them threads off of there? I don't. I really don't. So anyway, this one's going on a rear outrigger this time. Don't really use those anyway, but if it blows the nut off, I can say I was wrong, you were right. To those that said that's probably what happened, but I just don't see it because if it had blown it off, it would have really tore those threads, the tops of them off, and I just don't see that. And that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. Alrighty, kids. It's the end of whatever today is. I guess it's Thursday. I had no idea it was Thursday. I've just been out here in my own little world. I got the steering cylinder boxed up finally. Get that shipped off to Andy tomorrow. I got the check valves on underneath. I went to get some hoses built, but they didn't have the smaller ends that I need. So sometime tomorrow, they'll have those done. Got the one check valve installed back here on this ram. Anyway, I'm uh, just putting off the nasty stuff. <laughs> so I guess tomorrow which is Friday, we'll be taking lines out and that big old block off, see if I can get that rotary valve out of there. Oh, I know what, I gotta ask you this. So, there's an outfit in Texas, says they can get the OEM cables I need. Uh, Jake took these title falls to a place that builds cables and they said they couldn't build them and they talked about some place in Salt Lake, but they wanted an arm and a leg. So these have to be a certain size because there's no ring that fits on here to seal the oil. And these cables still, I mean, if I had to, I could use them again, but I had to unscrew them with a pair of vice grips and I kind of messed these up a wee bit. But this outfit in Texas wants $195 a piece, which I'm willing to pay. But they want me to send them a picture of the front and back of my credit card, along with the security code and everything. And I'm just not comfortable doing that. I don't understand that kind of nonsense. I, I am not giving somebody my number forever. If they lose it, then it's just a mess. So, does do any of you guys know somebody that could build these for me? I, I'm just not sure where to go to get these done. I know nothing about building cables, so I don't know if that's a difficult thing or what the hell. So... I need to get that done. Either that or I need to find somebody else to buy it from. And finding, I mean, this outfit in Texas has access to these galleon parts. And they tell you that there's freight coming into them. It's like five to seven days to get to them. And then outgoing freight. So they're pimping galleon parts. And I'd really like to find out where I could go direct to whoever's got galleon parts. But for the life of me, I can't seem to find anything on the internet about who actually has galleon parts. So if you know, put them in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. Matt sold this snowmobile. The other day, I guess tomorrow there's a guy coming from Salt Lake to get it. And this is one he got from Mr. TD24. 
that runs he got rid of the hack valve off of it 1807 original miles anyway i'm going to end this video here uh i have done a lot of work said a lot of swear words i hope you're enjoying this torture that this galleon's given me so anyway i haven't worked on a video i haven't done anything all week i've just been so busy so it's thursday evening i gotta go in and get this all done and get it uploading tonight so you can watch it tomorrow so anyway see you later